Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. Moro and his goons have begun their invasion of Earth, Maris himself is indeed an angel and the brother of Whis, and Vegeta continues his training as he battles against the distant cousin of Zarbon, and big surprise, ends up whipping his big monster ass. Hello my friends, welcome back to another review of Dragon Ball Super, the manga series! I'm going to be talking about two chapters today, because I did not have an opportunity to talk about the last one. That was a chapter that came out right before Christmas, so I was busy as shit! So I was going to decide to wait until the next chapter before I talk about both of these, and let me just say that I am loving this arc so much. I really hope that we're going to get the return of the Dragon Ball Super anime at some point, because I would really like to see this arc animated because of how insanely wacky it truly is. I absolutely love all of the nutty battles that are going on in this arc, and all of the ridiculous throwaway villains. Yes, they're throwaway, but they're so exciting in that classic Dragon Ball sense. I think my favorite thing about both of these chapters right here has got to be Vegeta's battle against one of Moro's goons who goes by the name of Yuzun, who will look incredibly familiar because he's from the same race as Zarbon. You remember Zarbon, right? From the Frieza arc, the Namek saga? He was the pretty boy who transformed into a monster and also got his ass kicked by Vegeta. Well, history is going to be repeating itself in this really great scene here, which is an awesome display of Vegeta's brand new powers. I know it seems kind of insane, but it happens in every arc of Dragon Ball. These characters who are literally hanging out with the gods just continue to get more powerful. Vegeta in particular has been training with Paibara, and he is using his brand new powers to just absolutely waste this guy. What I love about it is that even just standard stuff, like using a key blast, just gets absolutely amplified with their brand new spiritual forms. And it's just such a joy to actually see. His battle against Yuzun is awesome too, and when I first saw him, my first thought was, well, he could just be a random pretty boy alien, but the minute he transforms into like his monster form, I was just like, oh my god. Zarbon's cousin is just about to get his ass filleted by Vegeta. And this entire battle scene was great because, you know, of course Vegeta didn't even get hurt at all and it was just, if anything, just a display of his brand new power, but the overall spectacle of the battle was great, with them sort of slamming into buildings, Yuzun picking them up and throwing them, and Vegeta just casually dodging around them. It was all just so perfect and I loved all of the big attacks that Vegeta got off, the classic punches, everything just worked here. And I even love how Yuzun is defeated as he's running away, and this massive building that he was actually throwing at Vegeta ends up hitting his ship, which just kills him in the process. It's insane. So, Vegeta is going to stay behind, and he's going to continue his training with Paibara as Moro and his goons prepare their big invasion of Earth. While all of this is going on, we get to learn a little bit more about Maris, and of course him being an actual angel, the brother of Whis, and apparently he has been sent to this dimension to sort of, like, keep things in tab, to check on things, but not necessarily overuse his power, and he almost seems like he's going to use his power to try and take on Moro. That's when Whis and the Grand priests decide that they're going to step in and they're like, no, nope, you're done here. You're returning home. That's the end of it. Angels cannot interfere in mortal affairs. If they ever do, if they ever get into an actual battle, they themselves will be eradicated. They're going to be destroyed. Angel law is pretty freaking serious. And Maris even gets transformed and he goes through like the uh, the process where he wears the same robes as Whis and the other freaking angels that we've seen from the series. So it's pretty official about this character, like who he is and what he's doing. But he still managed to get some good training with Goku, who is going to have to return to Earth by himself, which I think is kind of a cop-out. It's the only part of the entire arc that I don't like because he has to use a spaceship to get back. And Goku, let's face it, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. He's not very smart. Let's face it, he's a fucking dumbass. <laughs> He just can't pilot the ship to get back to Earth. He ends up going to like random alien planets asking for directions. It's just hilarious how they're going to have to delay the arrival of Goku because he's stupid and can't get back home. Even though he could probably just use instant transmission to actually make this happen. But again, I feel it is kind of a cop-out, but at the same time, there's something funny about watching Goku try to get directions from weird jellyfish aliens. 
I don't know, it kind of works. It's the most recent chapter of Dragon Ball Super, however, where things really start to kick off as Moro arrives on Earth and all of his goons just go all over the planet and start attacking everyone. And we get to see that everybody is getting ready to fight. And you know what's awesome? It's not just Gohan and Piccolo. We get to see the return of freaking Yamcha and Chaozu. Roshi is even freaking there. Tien Shenhan, like everybody is back. The classic warriors from Dragon Ball Z. Yamcha in particular is great because they sort of make fun of him and yet he still manages to kick some ass. This is a chance to prove that yeah, Yamcha's not the most powerful character in the series and he's kind of a jobber, but man, this is like his moment. This is his time to come back and bring on the Wolf Fang Fist and kick some alien ass. That's exactly what I want to see from Yamcha in this arc. Even Chaozu. I want to see Chaozu do something awesome. He's only done like two things in the series, which was fight against Krillin and Dragon Ball and then blow himself up trying to kill freaking Nappa. I want to see the weird little freaky psychic clown do some crazy shit. Don't you? I think this is gonna be pretty exciting, personally. And then we get to see all the major, like, big battles are getting ready to kick off again with Krillin fighting against the weird freaking panda dude, which is really awesome. You have Roshi, who of course is going after three female characters. I thought his trading at the end of the last arc was allowing him to get over his greatest weakness. Maybe we'll get to see how that's all going to play out here. And then of course we have Gohan and Piccolo going up against 7-3, which is just classic. In that classic kind of Dragon Ball way of just beams flying all over the fucking place, dudes dodging shit, running around. Freaking Piccolo and Gohan teaming up against 7-3 is so damned exciting. And you know what? That's not even the best part. 17 and 18 arrive. And they're the perfect type of opponents for 7-3. Not only is this now a battle of Android versus Android, but 17 and 18 don't use key. Their power can't be absorbed. And we saw how powerful 17 was the, at the end of the power of destruction arc, whatever the fuck was called, battle with Jiren. We know how strong 18 is. He is just going to wipe the floor with these guys. 17, 18, 18, 17, you know what I'm talking about. The point is shit about to get real. And with Gohan and Piccolo having to trade off their opponent, they're going to have to get someone new to fight against. I don't know who that's going to be, but man, guys, I'm just so hyped for everything that's going on in this arc. Vegeta's still doing his training, Goku's lost, and the side characters are finally getting their due. Battling against some big powered, super powered aliens, and it is just classic in the best way possible. I love this stuff so much. I, I love the craziness of Dragon Ball. And that's why I want to see it return in anime format so much for all of the awesome characters that are appearing in this arc and the cool battles that they can actually expand upon. Everything's moving really fast in this arc, but if an anime version came out, let's face it, things would probably move a little slower and they would probably change these fights and make them expand a little bit more. And that could be really good as long as they do it with good animation. Hopefully they freaking will when it returns. There's no telling when the Dragon Ball anime is going to return. They said there's going to be a sequel to Broly. I've seen no information on that yet. There have been a lot of hints that the anime is going to return. I don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe at the very end of this Moro arc in the manga version. All I know is, Toei Animation, if you're watching this video, fucking bring it back. That's all I have to say. I just want to see it return. So, what's the rundown on this chapter, chapters of Dragon Ball Super? If you can't tell from my tone, I, I feel like a kid again when I'm reading this manga series. I just have so much fun from the wacky character designs to the awesome action scenes and just the grand scale of things. And you, you always think in the back of your mind, at least me anyway, when I'm watching or reading Dragon Ball, that this is going to be the same old, same old stuff. It's going to get boring. I'm not going to like it. Shit, no. Dragon Ball is like a drug. Hook it to my veins. I just want more of this shit all the time. One of the happiest parts of my life, this might even sound kind of sad, is when Dragon Ball Super came back and was airing for the first time. Getting to watch that show every Saturday night with my friends was one of the most fun experiences of my life. Dragon Ball is the series that got me into anime and manga in the first place. As someone who grew up during the golden age of Toonami, getting to see all that for the first time, there's no doubt that it was instrumental in my love of the medium. So getting to see it return is just something that must happen, and it's still getting to experience it, at least in manga format, is great. It sucks that it comes out on a monthly basis, but at the same time, it's also a good thing, because every single chapter is long and lengthy, and has great art and action and hilarious moments, and I mean, come on, guys. Yamcha's back. If that's not the worth the price of admission, I don't know what is. And by the way, the price currently is free. You can read this manga for free at Viz's website every single time a chapter comes out, and that is just awesome. 
Freaking Zeno bless them for that. That's freaking great. So I love both of these chapters. What more can I say? I'm giving both of them a 5 out of 5. As a classic Dragon Ball fan, what's not to freaking love here? You heard my thoughts, though. I want to hear yours. Tell me what you thought about both of these chapters in the comment section below. The big, giant Moro invasion. Do you have any favorite moments? What sort of fights are you hoping to see? What is Vegeta going to learn from Paibara? Will Goku eventually make it to Earth and use Ultra Instinct? Let's see what's going to happen. Let's have a discussion all about it in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more like this. Use your most powerful Kamehameha Blast to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. If you want to go the extra mile, maybe check out my PayPal and Patreon account. A little bit goes a long way. With that being said, thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.